You need to understand the battle is not between you and your spouse. The battle of your marriage is not even between you and Satan. As angry and as annoying as Satan is, it's not your problem. Whenever people say the devil is the reason my marriage is breaking, they just don't want to take responsibility. Are you here, somebody? When you say it's the devil, nobody should blame you. That's the point. Somebody get what I'm saying? When they catch somebody that is stealing, what does he say? The devil. Meaning, I'm not the one. Let's arrest the devil. Adam and Eve also tried it. When they ate the fruit, they were trying to pass the blame. In fact, somebody said, and I think it makes sense, that the way they transferred ownership of the earth to Satan is by transferring the blame to him. Because whoever you blame, you have given authority over your life. Whenever you make excuse, that excuse becomes the power over that situation. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? That excuse becomes, you give that excuse power. So the battle of your marriage is not even between, it's not even between you and Satan. The battle over your marriage is between you and your emotions. It's between you and your emotions. That's the real battle. Between you and what? Your emotions. Not between you and your spouse. Not between you and the devil. It's between you and your emotions. We have become too subject to our emotions in this time and age. We have become too submitted to our emotions in this time and age. Once the devil can find out that you have no control over your emotions, then he can use that lack of control and manipulate you. Satan can force you. How many of you know Satan can force you? As powerful as Satan is, you know you can't carry your hand and go and put in fire. I don't know if you know what I'm saying. All the people that say Satan has made me do it, do you notice that Satan only leads them in the direction that they like? I don't know if you know what I'm saying. All the people that say is Satan, you notice that it's only the things they like. Satan has never led them to fast. Oh, somebody's not hearing what I'm saying. Satan has not said, okay, don't eat today. No. The thing you hear Satan tell them is, don't talk to your wife today. It leads you in the direction you like. The battle is not between you and Satan. As powerful as Satan is, so he only looks for the areas you yourself have dropped the ball. He looks for the areas where you have submitted authority to him. That's what Adam and Eve, Eve did. They submitted authority to him. That's the same thing he does to today. He looks for where you submit authority to him before he can walk. The battle is in you and your emotions. That's the battle. And what he does is that he looks for the opportunities where you are not willing to control your emotions and he takes advantage of it. Satan is not more powerful than us, but he takes advantage. That's what the Bible says. He says, let's, the, let, let's not be ignorant of the device of the, Satan, the devil. Let's he take an advantage. Let's he have an advantage. That's what he does. He takes advantage of something you are already giving him. If I ask here, that's why you will notice at particular times of your life or your day, there is more propensity to quarrel for no reason. Have you noticed that one? Some of you even coming here today, you quarreled. Everything was peaceful throughout the week until it was time for this conference. Is somebody get what I'm saying? Some of you, as you were driving here, it was a heated argument. Don't smile too much. I don't know it's you. I'm talking about. Just keep straight face. Are you getting what I'm saying, sir? Satan will know when you are about to go and get something that will help you. When you are about to make a major move and he will just instigate whoever is weaker emotionally amongst you. Whoever we allow him, he will instigate that person. It can be anybody amongst the two of you. He takes advantage of your emotional weakness. The real battle between you and your emotions. That's where the real battle is. It's you and your emotions. Whenever you want to do something big, whenever you are, both of you are believing God for something big, you are about to go for an interview, you are about to go, go for um, embassy something, you are about to go for something big, you will find out that period, he will like to bring confusion amongst you. And then, when that confusion happens, 
when you are not, you don't go for the interview in the right state of mind, or you couldn't make the service, you couldn't make the appointment, guess who you would think is the devil in your life? You say, this is my spouse. You always do this thing when I have a big contract. You must be a witch. She's not a witch. It's your emotions that is a witch. <laughs> Somebody get what I'm saying? I even discovered it also in my life. Um, most of you know I preach around a lot. And I always take my wife everywhere I preach. Except it's totally impossible for her to come. But largely 98% of the time we're together. There was just a period I just noticed that whenever we had a major program, when we get to the place and we're praying for the place, something will just happen and there will be some kind of tension. It happened once, happened twice. And after that, you know what? I think I won't be taking you to my preaching. <laughs> because it seems you just look for... And she had to now pay attention and discover that it's true. Everything is fine. Some people are nodding themselves. They know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Everything is fine until that major day. We could have had this tension any other day. Not on this big day. So I began to see a pattern in it. So you must conquer that pattern. You see, when you identify something, you now take note of it. The power of freedom is from knowledge. So just you knowing now that this is a pattern in your life and in your marriage, both of you will now pay attention to it and make sure you don't give that loophole to the devil at the wrong time. Because that's what he likes. You're about to make a major move. You're about to plan something. You're about to do something together. Major move. He will just look for the emotional loophole and instigate strife. And the Bible says where there's strife, there's all manner of evil works. Strife is not as ordinary as you think. Strife opens the door further for the devil to attack. There's nothing as bad as strife coming in when your child is sick. When both of you are supposed to stand together. Strife coming in when you are facing a challenge, facing a financial challenge, then strife comes. Satan will just knock you out totally. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? The power of strife. <laughs> There's a company that does haulage, long driving haulage, you know. So the, uh, they need people to drive for 22 hours, 23 hours straight to go and deliver things in America. And they found out that for that to happen, they need two drivers. They can't have one driver. They need two drivers so that one person can sleep or rest so that, you know, they won't crash. They now also thought that it's even better for the two people to be husband and wife. <laughs> but they said they will have to screen your marriage very well to be sure <laughs> that uh, you won't develop family problem with our goods behind your back. <laughs> you see, they understood the power of how if there's peace and harmony, this company will work well. But if there's strife, these guys will damage our goods. Like I was saying earlier on, one Sunday morning many years ago, we were on a, me and my wife were on our way to church, and we saw a car swerving left and right, swerving left, in, on the road, on the highway. The car was swerving like, you know, James Bond movie. I mean, my curiosity won't allow me. My wife is not curious about anything in this life. <laughs> she can see that kind of thing and say, mm, I don't know what they're doing. Face, not me. I must find out what's happening. So I raced up near them. This is what was happening. I saw the wife sitting on top of the husband in the driver's seat. They were both struggling for the steering. So that's why they were moving like this. On the highway, Sunday morning, on their way to church. You see, Satan, they could have had this fight before the steering, you see. This fight, we can have it at home during breakfast. But it had to be on our way to church. It had to be in motion. And they were wearing um, Anko. They were in the same outfit. <laughs> their cloth was in agreement, but their spirit was not in agreement. Now, that was not the biggest shocker for me. The biggest shocker for me was that their baby was at the back of the car. You see, emotions had taken over from reasoning. Because this fight can be postponed. Even football match, they postpone it when rain is too much. They can postpone this fight. But this fight had to happen even if we kill our child. You see, that's what happens when you surrender yourself to your emotions. The battle is not between you and your husband. The battle is not between you and your wife. The battle is not even between you and Satan. It's between you and your own emotions. Not your husband's emotions, though. Not your wife's emotions. Your own emotions. If you can win over your emotions, you win in anything in life. Managing your emotions is not only for marriage, it's for life. 
The people that win in life manage their emotions. Those that don't win. In fact, the way life is, it's about who can manage their emotions better. That's all life is about. If they take everybody in this world now, take every money and give everybody the same amount of money, before long, some people will rise again to the top. Some will go again to become broke. And if you check why, it's usually because of how they manage their emotions. How did Jacob become way richer than Esau? Esau was the one that was even advantaged. So they were never on the same level. But because he couldn't control hunger, he traded. That's what life is. About who can manage emotions. How many of you had those classmates in school when they all share biscuits in school? Sanguines and the rest, before they even share, finish. You don't chop your own. But you know those annoying people? They will keep their own. After break, the value of that biscuit has gone up. So you understand what I'm saying? That's, that's, this is what's happening in life. Oh. This is what's playing now in life. This is what people are doing with land. This is what people are doing with houses. The same thing. Why some are broke all the time, some are rich all the time. It's managing emotions. After break, the value of that biscuit has gone up. After class, the value has tripled. If when you hear that sound during last lecture, even the lecturer, you know, <laughs> it's really like, what was happening? <laughs> Why are they doing that thing? The value has gone up. If they tell you that time, but your next three meals, you must give me half of it, the person will say, I agree. It's about managing emotions, guys. It's the same thing affecting your finances. Same thing. Same thing affecting your relationships with people. That you must say your mind at every time. You must comment on every issue you see, whether they invite you or not. It's the same thing. Those that have great relational skills, they know that it's not everything I must say. And it's not every time I must say it. There's the right timing, there's the right place. There are even some places I will never even say it. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? So it's, it's the battle is between you and your emotions, not between you and your spouse. Between you and your emotions. So if you're going to have a successful marriage, if you're going to enjoy your marriage, both of you must become experts at managing your emotions. And this is not something strange. God actually wants us to manage our emotions. Proverbs 25, verse 28. It says, he that has no rule over his spirit is like a city broken down without walls. So he that had no rule over his own spirit, not your partner's spirit. The problem is that you're trying to control your partner's reaction. Leave that. The little thing I know about God is that every time you come to God, he talks to about the situation, it is you he talks to and about. God will never be wasting time discussing the other person with you when the other person is not there. What concern the other person? God, my whole plan is this. God will talk about a soft answer, turn it away. He'll be talking to you. He'll be saying, uh, control yourself. He'll be talk he won't talk about the other person. He that has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down and without walls. You see, in those days, they understood how without walls your city is gone. It's not like today where police can, there's forensic, there's CCTV, they can do investigation. Those days, there was nothing like that. If you don't fence your place, somebody will literally plunder your goods. They will steal it. Somebody get what I'm saying? So that's how they say your life will be destroyed, will be robbed, will be stolen. If you have no fence, if you can't control your own emotions. I was in a pastor's meeting many years ago. And since we were pastors, after the sharing, they said, let's pray for each other who has prayer point. One person raised his hand. That has a very urgent prayer point. He said, what's it? He said, they just um, leased the land. And that since they leased it, they discovered that people were coming there to urinate, to defecate. Every day they were clean that they should pray against the spirit. It's not... And the water supply, I say, hey, hold on. If you have worked with me or know me, you know I don't just shout at God anyhow. <laughs> we have a very cordial and friendly relationship. When they give me sense, I use it. I say, hold on, hold on. I say, this land you lease, is there any fence there? He said, no. I say, is there any security man there? I say, no. I say, go and fence it and put security there. Because no matter how much you pray, an empty land is calling people to come and use it for anything they like. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? They said that's how you are when you don't manage your emotions. You are just waiting to be plundered. So you must manage your emotions. You must what? The battle between you and your emotions. And this same thing 
is what has caused problems in marriage and even for single people. This is why somebody says, I don't love you anymore. Because they are seeing love as an emotion. Love is not just an emotion. In fact, there is something I've been saying recently that there's no way they say we should marry who we love. They say we should love who we marry. Very important. No way they say we should look for who we love to marry. Instead, they say when you marry, love that person. There's no way in the Bible they said look for who you love to marry. Marry who you love. There's no way. It is a man-made concept. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? It is a what? Man-made. And it, is, it just sounds sweeter. It just sounds romantic. It's, it helps to sell movies and sell music. But in reality, it makes no sense. Because this is why we have people that are single massively. Long-term championship in singleness. In our own time. Because we are using a style that can never work. People are going about looking for their one true love. What are the odds that you ever find the one true love? And what do you mean by one true love is an emotional love. Not knowing that no matter how you find this person that you claim that you love, after the marriage, all of us, the one way they just meet and the one way find one true love, all of us is commitment. We're all still going to use. That's why the, the more excited some people are before the wedding, statistically, they are more likely not to even enjoy the marriage. <laughs> because they're very excited. Woo, woo, woo. The higher your excitement, the more challenge, because excitement never lasts. Emotions is not what we used to run a marriage. Somebody catch what I'm saying? I had to tell, I, I had to keep telling the single people this. They are looking for their one true love. I mean, think of our days of our parents. How many times did you meet somebody in their 30s that were single? Most people at 20s have started having children or have finished even having children. Because they were not looking for one true love. In our own time, we are looking for one true love. So you see 38, 37, 30, both male and female, single. Because the men are looking for one true love. Women are looking for one true love. No, only men. Women are looking for one true love. I've seen women see very fine men, like they say, it's not my spec. <laughs> because they have programmed her since she was young that there's something called her spec that she's looking for. Let me tell you why that's going to be a problem. What are the odds that you will find a house, your dream house, your spec? is a bungalow that has basement and the basement has elevator. Then it has three palm trees. One big swimming pool and one small swimming pool and then a basketball court. This is your spec. What are the chances you will find this house I just described soon? You see the problem with spec? If you say, Lord, I just need bare land, I will build the bungalow. You can find that one today. So this is why people are single long. 38, you're looking for two swimming pool and three palm tree. I asked my mom, my mom is around in, in my house. I asked her, I said, how did you meet Papa? How did you guys marry? She said she was in Anglican church, she was in the Anglican church, and she was in a youth fellowship. One of the elders that was married, that was their coordinator, one of their coordinators, brought my dad from Lagos. She was in Enugu um, in, 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 or something, I remember. Enugu? Yeah. So she was in Enugu with, in that uh, place, and this guy brought my dad from Lagos. My dad came from Lagos. They had never seen before, never met before brought her to her house and said, um, this is so-and-so from Lagos. He wants to marry you. <laughs> I don't think my dad had ever seen her before. They just trusted that elder because this was a church setting. They trusted that elder that he was sound. And the elder knew the, the girls in church and knew the one that was sensible. And said, that's it. So I asked her, so what did you say? She said she looked at him. She liked him. He was okay. She said she agreed. There. <laughs> she agreed there and there. So that happened in, in December or thereabout. December, then they did traditional by April. Wow. She was in her 20s, early 2022 or something. That time, how, how do you see a lady 30 something those days that is single? Where do you see it? It's rare. It's rare. But now we are doing true love. So we have mercy. See, even your hormones were not created to be single that long. 
So when you meet a man that is 40, he has children. Either he knows or he doesn't know. <laughs> he has. I'm a counselor. Just listen to what I'm saying. <laughs> Pastor Isaac, I know what I'm talking about. He has children. Either known or known, aborted or alive, he has. Because your hormones can't. He wasn't created, created to survive that. When they say you should be celibate and should not have sex, uh, marriage, uh, sex for marriage, they assume you will marry in this lifetime. <laughs> you want to be single T40. That battle, you, you, you will not be productive because you are battling your hormones every day. And with all the amount of sexual content available everywhere. So have, we're, we're, we're just stressing people. 38 year old single. And the, the, what's happening is that there's a lot of underground sexual activity going on. So needs are being met. That's why those men are even staying that long. If, they, if nobody was cooking for them, washing for them, and servicing them sexually, they will marry this week. They are staying that long because somebody is meeting that need illegally. Your hormones weren't even created for you to be 20 something, 30 something, and still be single. What one true love? No matter when you find this one true love, you will still need commitment to stay with this person. This is why I meet a lot of married people that tell me I don't love my husband anymore. Because once you want to start from the foundation of emotional love, you want to start from one true love. What you're saying, what you're looking for really is a lack of responsibility. You don't want to own it. You want to just say, oh, I just fell in love. That's what you want to say. I, I just saw him. I confused. Butterfly began to fly. I just fell in love. That's what you want. You want something that will control you, not something you will control. So when you start from that foundation of emotional love and you hit six months in your marriage or somewhere between six months and two years, that emotional love will go and you will say, I don't love him anymore. That's the reason people divorce. I don't love her anymore. And I, I, I meet a lot of that. Married people say we don't love each other anymore. The love after the marriage is a commandment. It's not a feeling. So you can do it if you are ready. You can do it today. It's a commandment, not a feeling. So what we normally say is that there's no way they say you should marry who you love. They only say you should love who you marry. There's no way they say you should marry who you love. They only say you should love who you marry. The second love in that statement, the first love in that statement is an emotional love. It's something you're feeling. But the second love in that statement is commitment love. It has nothing to do with how you feel. So it usually goes in three stages. There is the emotional love. Then you fall out of love again. Then now you fall into love again second time. The difference is that the first one was emotional. You didn't have the control over it. It just happened to you. Maybe you saw her shape. You saw her hair. You, you, you saw his chest. You saw his car. <laughs> I will get to that because many people think their emotions just happens. That's what you think. No, you are the one that already typeset what to excite you emotional. You typeset it. You put it inside. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. I will get to that. Your emotions are not independent at all. They are just obeying your command. So you type it ahead. Fine cars excite me. Put it in your CV. So anywhere you go and you see fine car, you are excited. That's why some other person will see that car and not even know what you are talking about. Because inside his own CV or whatever, he didn't put car. Are you getting what I'm saying? So there are three stages. Excitement, love. After that, most people fall out of love and now say, I need a new spouse. I don't love this anymore. What you need to do is to move from emotional love to intentional love. So at the beginning, you were doing things. You were doing all the right things, just that you were not the one in control. It was happening because you were excited. When you get married, you need to identify those same things and now begin to do them intentionally. So you move from emotional love to intentional love. The reason why marriages fail is that people want to only remain with emotional love. That has been the problem. One of the main with emotional love, emotional love by its design does not last. So when it fades, people now say, I don't love you. No, no, no. When that one fades, you start to act out in love. And when you start to do love, it will come back again. The difference is that the second time, you know why it is here. You are the one that is controlling it. And then the love can last forever. That's why the first love doesn't last forever. It was not designed to his emotions. Do you know what emotions are? Emotion is simply a strong feeling. That's what emotion is. A strong word feeling. It doesn't last. 
Hallelujah. Please, come. I, want, I need you, the man. I didn't even know this is your husband. This is your, um, he's big like this. <laughs> Hope you don't shout at home. <laughs> see, I see big. I see the poor guy where you go, man. <laughs> What's your best food first? You guessed right. Is that fufu? <laughs> like 38 wraps. 34, okay. Because <laughs> that this would have been too much. <laughs> Please just face that way. Face your wife. So face your wife's side. Where your wife's good. You know what emotion is? It's a strong feeling. This emotion. That thing you just felt now. Did you feel it? Yes, sir. That's emotion. Emotion is a strong feeling. This is what people want to marry on. How I'm feeling now. The thing is that by, he's, he felt it now. But in the next one hour, he won't feel it again. Emotion by design is not supposed to last. And... He can't make a conclusion because I hit him now. It would be wrong for him to conclude I'm a wicked person. His knowledge of me should supersede his feeling from me. If he doesn't use his knowledge of me to judge how he feels, he can go about saying, that pastor was just beating me. Then he'll make a permanent decision. I'm not coming to this church again. He has made a permanent decision because of a temporary feeling that wasn't well processed. This is where people are entering trouble. Emotion simply means a strong feeling. You can go, even my hand, they pain me. Now me, they hit them, but <laughs> now me, hand, they pain. Used to be a wrestler in your former life. <laughs> Praise God. Probably, I ain't a department in church. By Sajud, he has joined protocol. So I say number. Let him be following me. I'll go job looking for trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. And every morning, make sure they start eight fufu. Two thirty four, sorry. Fufu available in the green room. <laughs> Praise God. But you get what I'm saying, guys? A strong feeling. Let me round up so that I can bring the next speaker. So, how do I manage my emotions? Very simple. I'll run through a few things for you. So that you will learn how when Satan is trying to look for that loophole. I'll run through it quickly. Number one, knowledge. Knowledge helps you manage your emotions. Like I said, your emotions are not on auto. The big mistake you are making is to assume that how you feel, you have nothing to do with it. No, you are the one programming it. Your feelings don't control you. You are meant to control your feelings. We, have been, we, we are raising the younger generation to believe that you are what you feel. Don't deny your feelings. You are, you are not what you feel. Your feelings are real, but they are not always right. Your feelings are real. We're not saying your feelings are not real, but they are not right. Your feelings are real, but they are not, they don't last. You can feel a certain way today, but that's not necessarily how you feel all through today. You can feel a certain way now, but it doesn't mean it's a right feeling. Your feelings are real, but they're not always right. So you can control your feelings. So number one, knowledge. Knowledge. For instance, I have a book everybody here should have. If you're a married person. And most of the guests, all the guests will have books. So please, when they come, invest in knowledge. Invest in book, it's part of it. I have a book titled A to Z of Marriage. I don't know if they have the book here. If you are here and you, are, you don't have the book yet, as a couple, you must have that book. A to Z of Marriage, in that book, I just simply, we broke down, my wife wrote the book, we broke down in alphabetical order what love means to a man and a woman. Having that simple knowledge of what love means to a man and a woman in alphabetical order. <laughs> so my wife wrote to the men, coaching them about women. I wrote to the women, coaching them about men. One of the first things I told women, A for that is acceptance. I told women that men like acceptance. A man's number one of, the, one of the major needs for a man is acceptance. Most women want to change their husbands. That's the plan. From there they married him, they've planned all the things they're going to change about him. And because women are perfectionists by nature, even when they've changed, they just want to keep changing things. Women can be restless like that. They are created that way. If you want to change a man, you will change him better by first accepting who he is than just trying to control him. The mistake you're making is that you're confronting him that you must change. No. First accept him. If he eats and makes loud noises, instead of just say you're a bush man, you will disgrace us one day. Most men will remain like that if you talk like that because you want to confront him. No. Tell him, ah, honey, I like the way you enjoy food. 
That's why I like cooking for you. You can enjoy your food. You say, <laughs> are you better? You think, but you know when we go out, we can't eat like this. Oh. People will think you are bush. Oh. We can't eat like this when we go out. Oh. It will sink in faster. Then you need to change. This is how your mates are eating. You are disgracing us. And that's what most women want to do. They don't want to control their emotions in their presentation. They want to say it as, if, as they feel it. You can't say it as you feel it. It says only a fool that says all in his mind at once. Are you here, somebody? I told them the A for women. My wife told the men, A for women is attention. Women like attention. You must give your wife attention. She can't enter the house and you don't go and spend time with her. She can't enter the house and you don't even look at her face. First thing she says, where's my food? She went to spend five hours in the salon to look good. She came in, you didn't even notice. Give her attention. Sit down with her. If she's having a bath, stay with her and just gist. She's cooking, stay with her and just give her attention. You must cut out time. Don't wait to feel like you will always be busy. So I did it and I forgot that. The point is that when knowledge comes like that, when you are getting knowledge of how men and women think, for instance, in church, we've been doing pink and blue series, very powerful series. You begin to understand how women think. It changed my own life. When I began to understand how women think and how men think are very different. They are very different. How men and women think are very different. The moment you understand that, you will stop. The things you are quarreling about will just disappear. Because you understand that they are not being mean. They are just being themselves. Knowledge. Number two. Your thoughts. What are you thinking about? I told you your emotions are not auto. Your emotions are not auto. Don't make that mistake. You think, this is just how I feel. I can't control it. No! Those emotions are directly connected to your thoughts. It's your thoughts that informs your emotions. Your thoughts. So what are you thinking about? For instance, if you no longer love your spouse, I can tell you two things that you might be thinking about. Sometimes it's even both. Number one, you are either thinking about another person that is not your spouse. If you're no longer in love with your spouse, I can tell you what you're thinking. Number one, you are either, there's somebody else you are in love with. In your mind, a person might be in your office, a person might be in church, a person might be anywhere in your neighborhood that you are just admiring and emotionally you are in love with this person. That has pushed out your spouse from the emotional space. Number two, if it's not that one, number two, then you are constantly thinking about the negatives of your spouse. Is your thoughts causing the problem? Not your spouse, it's your thoughts. And for every bad person, they have good sides. And every good person has bad sides. It's your thoughts. If you can cope these two things, trust me, you, you can start loving your partner again. You are focusing on what they are not doing, not what they are doing. In our course, dealing with a difficult spouse, one of the things we need to get to do is to write all the things you like about your spouse. Forget the ones you don't like. Can you think more about the things you like? Think more about the things you like. Okay, if there's nothing you like now, think about the things you liked. Because somebody said, right now, I don't like anything at all. Okay, well, how did you arrive here now? What did you like? <laughs> Think about the things you liked. Your thoughts control your emotion. That's why the Bible says, when you are tempted, don't say you are tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted. Neither tempted he any man. He said, because everybody is drawn away of his own lust. What that means is that you are actually drawn away from the things you are thinking. You became emotional about something based on what you are lost in, basically meaning what you are thinking. This is why, if you know about cars, then a fine car can entice you. Somebody doesn't even know anything about cars, if you like bring limousine, he doesn't understand why you are shouting. Your thoughts, I have to round up. I'm not wasting as much time as I should on these things, but let's go. Number three, that can help you manage your emotions, is growing spiritually. Growing spiritually. The Bible says walk in the spirit and you're not fulfilled the loss of the flesh. When you grow spiritually, your spirit has God in it. Your spirit knows the will of God. Your spirit desires to please God. It's part of how you take control over your feelings. It's by growing spiritually. He said the spirit and the flesh, they're always battling. So, but if you grow spiritually, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So you need to grow spiritually. So where is your prayer life? Where is your, are, are you guys committed in church? If you're attending a church where you're not growing spiritually, please at, look for other, either you're attending another church or look for other means to nourish yourselves spiritually. Marriage is a spiritual thing. 
So you can't do it carnally. You must do it spiritually. Number what? Number four, wise counsel and right company. Wise counsel, they go together. The kind of relationships you have determine the kind of counsel you hear. So what are the relationships in your life? If everybody you are, you are close to has left their marriage, there's a high chance they will empower you to leave your marriage. If everybody you are close to doesn't value marriage, does it, see, if you're a man here and all your friends have girlfriends, you already have girlfriend. <laughs> you either know or you don't know, but you already have. If all your friends are the kind of guys that celebrate side chicks, that's why your wife is complaining about your friends. She knows that that's how they live. Your friends bring, they bring their girlfriends for events. Your, your, your friends bring their girlfriends on business meetings, business trips. If those are your close friends, they will rub off on you. Say that works to the wise shall be wise. But he said the companion of fools shall be destroyed. Did you get this, guys? Number what is next one? Number five, learn to start acting right, doing what is right in spite of how you feel. The problem is that you are waiting to feel right to do right. No, you will do right to feel right. I like the way uh, my pastor, Femi Odoale, always says it. It's easier to act your way into feeling than to feel your way into acting. So start doing what's right. Even Jesus got to the point where he was tempted to do what he, didn't, what he shouldn't do. Even Jesus Christ. When he was about to go to the cross, he said, if it be possible, let this cup pass over me. That means how he was feeling at that time wasn't, you know, encouraging for him to continue the journey. So he said, if it be possible, let this cup pass over me. But I like the way he ended it. He said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will. So learn to do what is right. Let's do what God says to do in spite of how you feel. If God says be gentle with your spouse, be gentle even if you don't feel like being gentle. Somebody get what I'm saying? As a woman, if the Bible says a soft answer turneth away wrath, even if you feel like giving a fairly fireful answer, do what is right in spite of how you feel. So you need to know what is right and choose to do it. Respect your husband. Be gentle with your wife. Be considerate. Forgive. All those things. Do it in spite of how you feel. Number what? Number six, I'm going to do just seven things so that I can close. Number six. Under, on, under number five, doing what is right. Um, I also have another book I want to recommend. It's titled All Year Round. It's another good book you should get, All Year Round. In that book, again, um, there's All Year Round for Men, All Year Round for Women. So I'm my wife wrote it again. So in that book, I gave 52 tips for 52 weeks. So what I did is that every, for you as a man, every week I give you a tip. They will also send you email reminders in case you don't remember to read the book. They will send you email reminders every week, a tip, something you should do for your spouse. You see, once you start doing those actions in spite of how you feel, that's how you build love back. The love in marriage is intentional love, not emotional love. It's intentional love. You do kindness, acts of kindness, um, compliments. You start doing the right things, love will come back. This love is not, not something controlling you. Don't be in bondage to the emotional feeling of love. Instead, be committed to the action of love. So all year round, there's, for men, there's for women. It's also available. Please make sure you get it. It's a good book. So the women, too, you know all the things you should be doing for a man weekly. I gave 52 tips for 52 weeks. So that's why it's called all year round. So number six, I have to round up now. Number six, if you want to manage your emotions, then you need perspective. You need what? Perspective. Perspective helps you manage your emotions. When you understand people better, when you, when you learn to read the right meaning into things. Do you know why you blow hot most times? Is what the meaning you are reading into it. Um, there's a common example people give. For instance, look up everybody. If I do like this to you, if I do like this to you, if you're an African, it will pay pain you. But if you're a white person, it's greeting you. You do like this back. Say, thank you, man. Eh? You see, this thing means nothing. It's what you have inside you that means something. The action itself means nothing. Are you getting what I'm saying? So perspective matters. If you keep reading meaning into every action your husband or wife does, then you will always not be able to control your emotions. This is why you will blow hot, you will scatter, you will break everywhere. Say, so how can you do it? First find out what really happened. Gain perspective. Are you here, somebody? Gain perspective, it will bring peace. Gain perspective. When you see your husband boning and just walking about, gain, if he had a hard day, it's not about you. 
Say, can you burn it for me? You just came back. You have never seen it for two weeks. I just carrying your face. I a wicked man, you a wicked soul. No, it might just be a tired soul. It might be a frustrated soul. <laughs> that needs watering, not worrying. Read what meaning are you reading to every action? Don't read meaning that doesn't exist. I shared a popular story how we traveled to Dubai. I and my wife and some people, and I went to watch Champions League match. Um, Dubai is like three hours ahead of Nigerian time. So it ended like 1 a.m. Dubai time. So I entered the taxi back to the hotel from the viewing center, and the taxi driver was chewing gum, very irritating. <laughs> I mean, I like sitting in front, so I sat in front with him. He was chewing gum, <laughs> shaking his head. I was annoyed. I was boiling. I felt he would soon stop, he would soon stop. He continued. <laughs> ah, I couldn't take it anymore. I just unleashed on him. How can you be chewing gum like this? Are you okay? Then the motivational speaker and me also rose up. And you have your clients in the car, this bad customer service, bad for your business. I was going on and on. You know what the guy told me? The guy said, uh, the problem is that he's usually on night shift like this, which starts around 10, 11 to next morning. And that he, didn't, he normally sleeps during the day. But on this particular day, he couldn't sleep during the day. So as he's driving me now, he's feeling sleepy. That's why he's chewing the gum. I said, my brother, start to chew now. <laughs> Louder! Let me be hearing you. Chew, if you don't chew this gum, and if you have more, give me, let me join you. We chew, chew together. This, you can't sleep. You see, the moment I gained perspective on why he was making, chewing that gum irritatingly, it became desirable. I loved it. It was saving my life. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? It was literally saving my life. A lot of times they are blowing hot. That person is either in pain and needs love but you are more angry because they are not giving you love. They probably don't have love at the time to give. You are angry with your husband. We need to ask him what kind of marriage did he grow up seeing? How did his father treat his mother? If his father used to give his mother slam dunk and back breaker and all those things, if he's only shouting at you, that's progress. <laughs> mm. We can still get him to be better, but you need to appreciate where you are. If she, if she grew up seeing her father maltreat her mother, she might be skeptical and suspicious of everything you do. So you need to understand. Gain perspective. Then lastly, lastly, practice the pause. Pausing is always powerful. That means don't always answer at the spur of the moment. It's a big mistake. Don't always reply at the spur. Every time you pause, it allows you gain better understanding and better control of your emotions. Learning to pause. Start practicing pausing. That means you don't have to reply immediately. It's that, like the scripture I quoted earlier on, that only a fool says all his mind at once. Can you learn to just reflect, calm down? When you are calm, you think better. It's scientifically known that when you are too emotionally high, you don't make right decisions. You don't. Everybody will make a better decision if they calm down. Some of the greatest world wars and fights that has happened happened because somebody didn't take two minutes to pro How many of you, somebody has even sent you an SMS or a WhatsApp message and you didn't finish reading it? You just read what you thought they were saying. I have already replied. The person said, no, read it well. That's not what I was. You now find out that if you read it again, this same thing can actually be saying something else. But you have already replied by what? You have brought out your machine gun, your bazooka, your rocket launcher. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Practice the pause. You will always have a better answer if you pause. Even Jesus did the same thing. When they were about to kill that woman that was caught in adultery and they brought to him, he didn't answer immediately. He said he was writing on the sand. He practiced the pause, saying, hmm, if I say that you kill this woman now, people will say, Shabi is the case. He said he came to save the lost. Why is he killing the lost? If I tell them not to kill this woman now, they will say this one is condoning sin. You're a fake man of God. You were just pausing. You now got the wisdom. He said, okay, if there's anybody among you that has no sin, cast the first stone. Case close. But the pause allowed him to answer well. If it was John the Baptist, we know what he would have said. <laughs> the pause. You know John the Baptist died because he didn't have the pause. That's all. He was known to be too... He's one that said the violent take to it. Mm. His blood is hot. 
even when Jesus looked like Jesus was not coming to rescue him, he began to say, are we sure he's the one? Yeah, we should wait for that person. It's like that. Even when that king went to, what kid was that? One king went to marry somebody he's not supposed to marry. Everybody faced their front, but John the Baptist said, why? His blood is too hot. They pause. You know Jesus was around when that king married that woman. But Jesus just faced his own front. I'm going to die, but not today. <laughs> I'm going to die, but not today. <laughs> not this way. Somebody get what I'm saying. Have you been blessed this morning? Come on, give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a big hand. You can do better.